Yeah, so I will show you this proof in case of complex numbers. It is, it's a very simple one. It's a very elementary one. The reason we call this triangle inequality is basically on this diagram, because if you, if you picture, if you imagine your two vectors z and w, they are like this. I mean, two complex numbers. And the vector representation is like this. It is actually a pure coincidence that these two numbers on this, di on this particular diagram, these two numbers ended up with the same imaginary path. It has no bearings on the case, uh, just, just a coincidence. But if you have a diagram like this, this will be the vector representing the sum of two numbers. And the inequality itself, the inequality here tells you that the length of the sum doesn't exceed the sum of the lengths of individual vectors. If you transfer this length over here on this dashed line, you will see why we call the triangle inequality. The side here, the side of a triangle in length doesn't exceed the other two sides together, the other two lengths together. Uh, in case of complex numbers, the proof is, is a pure algebraic thing. So you, you prove it like this. You start, with the, you start with the observation that when you compute the length of a complex number, especially if you square it, uh, one of the good ways to compute that is multiply the complex number with its complex conjugate, like this. And uh, when you multiply two brackets of complex numbers, you, do, you can do the regular expansion, like with any numbers. So if I do my regular expansion, here, that, here what I will, I will obtain is the product of the first term here and the first term here. Then I put uh, the product of the second and the second. And then I will go with the mixed ones when z is multiplied by uh, w bar and w by the z bar, <laughs> z on z bar. Here's the complete expansion. Here's the complete expansion. Next, I will make the observation that this term, this term is in, effectively, it's a complex conjugate of this term. If you imagine you put a long bar across this product and you lower this bar to individual factors, uh, you will end up with a z bar and double bar over w, which is effectively just single, uh, not nothing. So this one is a complex conjugate of this number. And we know that when you add number with a complex conjugate, you will end up with a double of the real part of that number. This is something I'm going to fix in writing now. Here's my fixing. Well, of course, I make another observation as well, that the product of a complex number with its complex conjugate returns the length square. So here my replacement for this product, replacement for this product, and here's my double of the real part of one of these. I chose this one. Doesn't matter which one you choose, in fact. Now, at this stage, I have to stop this line of argument, and I have to take you a little bit in a different direction. Uh, I want to analyze what happens here. And in case of complex numbers, we can control this, or officially we say estimate this, or rather effectively like this. Look at this. If you have a, I'll do it here in the bottom part of my slide. If you have a complex number in the, in the algebraic form like this, you can think of this complex number if you wish. So here's my A uh, real part. Here's the imaginary part. If you have a complex number like this, <coughs> you can always say, well, because the length of this complex number is sum of the squares like this. It's Pythagoras, isn't it? Uh, you can always say, and that's, it seems like a trivial observation, but it's important. It's a crucial observation, in fact, for the triangle inequality. You can always say that the real part in absolute value will never exceed the length of the number itself. This side of my triangle is less than this side of a triangle. And the same true for, for the imaginary part. If you now take this Basically, it's the elementary observation, the elementary geometrical observation. If you take this and you project this onto this real part of this complex number, you will end up with something not so trivial anymore. You see, just, just projecting this trivial, tri taking this trivial observation and applying this to expression like this, look at what, what, what it will give me. It will give me that the absolute value of the real part, like this, you see, the real part of a complex number never exceeds the length of that complex number. It's here. I'm just taking this and applying to this very specifically crafted complex number, z times w bar. And then I end up with something like this. Or we all know that the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. We also know that the absolute value of the complex conjugate is the same as the absolute value of the number itself. Here. 
if I use this, if I use this inequality here, so if I replace this number, if I replace this number with its absolute value, which will make only things larger, and if I then control this with my product like this, that's the consequence of this argument, if I combine every, every step of these adjustments, that's the result I will come up with. First two terms, I just copied them, this one and this one. They went and down here. This one is just a double stage, double stage uh, estimate. First, we replace the number with its, with its absolute value. We all know real number never exceeds its absolute value. And then we replace it with this inequality. And that's the result of it. If you look into, the, if, if you look into this expression, you should recognize something very familiar. If I use the binomial formula, if I extract the perfect square, if I just do the expansion of what I just written, it will be something like this. Now, if you look at what we started with, we started with this expression. We did a few manipulations, in a few arguments. Uh, there was some estimate on the way, and we ended up with this. If you take a square root of the left-hand side, if you take a square root of the right-hand side, you will end up with a triangle inequality. 